Hey there, this is Terry Wheat from onceuponawheat.com. Thanks so much for joining us. I am going to talk to you about avocados and guacamole today. I've been to Mexico a few times. I love Mexican food. And for my whole life, up until about a year or two ago, I thought that I did not like guacamole at all. And my husband thought the same thing until we tried it homemade. We had had it at a number of restaurants and I'm sure it's probably homemade at those as well. But the way we tried it was amazing and I think I have the tips to help make yours amazing too and I think a lot of people avoid um, trying to make it with avocados because they're not sure when to um, buy those when they're ripe and so when I go to the store these are a little riper than I usually like because we had these for something else and didn't end up using those. But when I look in a store for my avocados, I'm looking for a deep purple color. And it's gonna be like the color of a ripe eggplant. That's what I'm looking for. If they are too green, a lot of times you'll see them and they'll be a really deep lime green, then that means they are not ripe at all, of course. And then sometimes you'll see them when they're brown and these are kind of starting to be brown and usually those are too ripe. So another thing that you can do is you want to feel and see if they're soft about like you would a peach. Um, if it is too hard, just like peaches, it is uh, not ripe at all and will take about three to five days to ripen completely. And <laughs> you can hear our dog, uh, Wanda the Greyhound, Wicked Wanda the Greyhound, and she's kind of rummaging around. So that's the noise. She has her own Instagram page if you want to follow her, Wicked Wanda the Greyhound. So, but anyway, um, so you want to have the texture of about like a peach. If it's too hard, it's going to be, um, not nearly ripe enough, it'll take three or four days, maybe five to ripen. And it's really best to get them fresh like the day of or the day before. Sometimes I buy them several days in advance, but they, um, they're, you know, they ripen pretty quickly and there's like a fine line of overripe. So um, if they're too soft, then they will be overripe and they'll be browning on the inside and so you don't want that either. So another thing that you can do, and I don't have them on these, but there's usually a little stem and it's right here and you can pop that out. I don't like doing that in this store because other people might want to do that. I don't like touching other people's fruit if I can avoid it, but if you're a total beginner and you cannot tell and you're unsure without doing that, you can pop the little stem out and right there in the center, you'll be able to look at the color. If it's a bright, pretty kiwi green, that's what you're looking for. That means those are perfectly ripe and those are ready to be used either that day or the next day. And if they're brown already, that probably means that they're going to be brown on the inside and not ripe. And so that will kind of help you as well. So when you bring these home, the way you're going to store them is you can just store them out on the counter until you use them. You do not want to put them in the refrigerator because you could keep them in there for weeks and they would not ripen. They would stay green, they would stay hard. And before I knew, I left them in there for weeks and weeks and they never did ripen. So you don't want that. If you buy them, but you need them to ripen more quickly than you thought, if you bought these for three or four days out or maybe five and you needed those to ripen much more quickly, you can put them in a paper bag. That will help and close up the paper bag so that the gases that uh, it emits will help it to ripen. Also, you can throw in other fruit like apples or bananas that will also emit gases and help it to ripen that much more quickly. But it still isn't going to be immediate. It's not going to be that day. It's still going to take, if you have a pretty green one, it's still probably gonna take a day or two possibly to fully ripen. So just keep those out on the counter. Um, I'm going to show you how to cut these open and I just cut another one so uh, you can see that but it's super easy all you do is cut them in half and you kind of turn and rotate your avocado around as you cut until you get two halves 
and then you will have one will have the seed in it it's a large round seed and you just pop that out you can do it with a spoon but I don't have one right here so I'm just gonna pop it out with my fingers to show you and it pops out pretty easily and you just get all of the flesh off of it and you throw it away and then you will have your avocado half and then you put it together and you just squeeze it out it'll come out at both ends and uh, you just squeeze it until it's completely flat until you get all of the flesh out and then you do the same thing with the other half and that's all there is to it a lot of people may use slices of avocado and may put them like on an egg sandwich with toast or on a burger or in a salad or even eat those plain um, so you can do all of those things um, to try your avocados on but I like to use them for guacamole because we really like it um, so then cilantro I love cilantro not everyone does but a lot of people who like it like to use fresh because it has just like most herbs are better fresh not all but most are better fresh and if you like cilantro it gives you more of that um, stronger flavor and it's a really good uh, green fresh flavor and so um, if you're not that big into cilantro you don't like very much of it you might stick with the dry it'll be much more mild so with cilantro when you bring that home you don't want to keep it in the refrigerator because it'll go bad fairly quickly it'll keep for a day or a couple of days but it'll turn dark and slimy fairly quickly and I just don't have that much luck with it it's also really finicky if you try growing it I've grown it for several years but it is not as hardy and easy to grow at least in our climate as most other herbs and so it's kind of finicky but what I've had the most success with and I've had this for a week and a half two weeks probably um, but if you put it in a glass of water about an inch or two up the bottom of the stem and keep that on your counter don't put it in the refrigerator then it'll stay green and nice and still usable for a couple of weeks which is a long time for cilantro and pretty good for any fresh herb so if you need to add more water you just keep adding water i throw the old water out and refresh it every day or so and that will keep your cilantro for a long time so i will mince that up and use quite a bit for mine because i love it some people use less all of the ingredients of guacamole are pretty much to taste because everyone is different um, for a full recipe, I will use three avocados, just to give you an idea. I'll use quite a bit of cilantro minced up, and then I feel like the two most important ingredients for um, guacamole, and this is where I think a lot of, even restaurants will get it wrong, and maybe a lot of people who've tried making it before, is I feel like the two most important ingredients are besides getting your avocado the right ripeness are salt and garlic and I feel like salt and garlic are important in most everything I use them in almost everything I love salt and garlic and so you want to get the right amount because salt really brings out the flavor even though you're gonna have salt on your tortilla chips if you're eating it as guacamole um, you know you want enough salt to uh, have it bring out the flavor but you can't taste that and test it when you're making it because it's going to take hours for the flavors to meld and so you wouldn't want to taste that to see if you need to add more until it's been several hours so garlic there are three options that you can use for garlic and my favorite is of course fresh i feel like fresh is almost always better and uh, especially with garlic and I just chop off both ends I take the skin off and then I mince it with my garlic mincer press and um, then I will put a few cloves in there but 
If you don't have fresh garlic, you can also use, if you're in a big hurry, you can use the jar garlic. I still think that's pretty good. Maybe not totally as good as fresh, but it's still pretty good, not as strong in flavor. And then if you don't have either of those and you're in a huge hurry, um, you can also use minced garlic and this won't go bad like the others. The jar garlic lasts for a really long time. This one lasts for like a year and a half. So that will last a very long time. Fresh garlic can last several months in your refrigerator if you, I keep mine in a baggie and I put a dry paper towel or a napkin and you need to change that out about once a month or so um, to make sure because it'll absorb the moisture. And if you don't put those dry paper towels or napkins in with it, it will keep creating moisture and then eventually it will mold and rot and soften into mush and you won't be able to use it. And so that's how you can keep your garlic for a really long time. Just keep it dry in the refrigerator. Some people just keep it in a dark place like a potato bin or even hanging or in a basement or something. Um, it would have to be a really dry basement though because you don't want it to get moist. So, garlic is very important. I use quite a bit in everything I make. <laughs> uh, lemon or lime juice? I use lime juice, and lemon and lime juice are very similar. Um, I feel like lemon is more tart, it's stronger, it's more aggressive in flavor, and I feel like lime is uh, more mellow deeper, richer flavor. It's not quite got the bite, but it still gives you that citrus flavor. And so that's what I use in mine generally, but it, light, or lemon juice works fine in a pinch. You can use that. And onion, not everyone likes onion, especially raw, which it will be in the guacamole. I do use a little bit of onion. Um, I just mince it up really, really fine. You can do that with an electric food uh, processor or chopper. You can also do it with your knife. Just make sure it's minced really tiny because most people don't want to bite into a raw onion. So, um, some people put tomatoes like diced up Roma tomatoes. Those are the small ones that are kind of firm and that's nice, but I, I don't feel like I need those and so I generally don't add those to my guacamole. And so you will let that melt together for several hours. An hour isn't quite enough to let the flavors totally settle in and blend together. I feel like I usually try to let those sit for two to four hours or so to let all of the flavors blend really well. And then if you want to, I have my recipe written down at this point, and so I know what I need, but if you want to taste it at that point when you're trying to figure out exactly what yours is going to look like, at that point you'll be able to see what it's truly going to taste like and then see if you need to add salt or any of the other ingredients. So, um, the annoying thing with avocados, my least favorite thing is that uh, avocados like apples oxidize, but I feel like they oxidize probably even more quickly than apples. And so you don't want to have a lot of leftovers of guacamole because I haven't found a way that is perfect yet for me that satisfies me it will turn brown the whole thing will turn brown it will look like something in a baby diaper maybe it, it doesn't look very appetizing a lot of people say oh it still tastes fine and a little tangy and just stir it up and it'll be fine and no one will notice but i can't get past the sight and so uh i generally won't eat it leftover and so i try to just make one recipe, even if we're going to a party, we've brought it to parties of like 15 to 20 people. And as long as it's not the main dish, the only thing that people are eating, as long as there are other things, then it really goes a lot farther than it looks, even though people like it really well. Um, you know, it doesn't take a lot and so it'll go pretty far and that way you can make sure that you don't have the leftovers. I have heard of people recommending putting a layer of water, like an inch of water over the top as you put it in the refrigerator and then it doesn't oxidize it 
I haven't tried it yet. I am going to try it. It sounds a little gross to me and so I haven't done it yet. And then you just pour the water off, of course, when you go to use it. But I am desperate so I'm going to try that sometime. I have tried another recommendation that people say is to put saran wrap not just over the top because if you just put it over the top it's going to oxidize but to press it down and so that you get all of the air bubbles and so that it is not getting air but even that it still oxidizes overnight so anyway i try to get it fresh generally and i try not to make too much that it won't get eaten and um as I said, I make one recipe, which is about three avocados. So hopefully that helps you. I think that will help you to have amazing guacamole. And if you think that you didn't like it before, I think if you try making it yourself, you will love it. Um, so hopefully these uh, tips helped you. And <clears throat> give the video a like if you thought it was helpful. Subscribe to our videos so that you don't miss any of those. We do a wide variety of videos. We have a travel blog at onceuponaweek.com and you can come there to see our travel uh, blog articles. We go all over the place and we are adding those every week and so you can um, see more of those. Those are helpful things. But our YouTube channel, I just do all kinds of things. Whatever I think will be helpful or useful to you, we're also available and would love to see you on social media. We have Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and now we just started Twitter and so on top of our YouTube. So come join us. Um, Follow us at all of those places. You can subscribe to the newsletter at onceuponaweek.com so that you don't miss it when any of the articles come out and so that you can see new things happening with our family and down the road get exclusive offers. And so we appreciate you. Thanks so much for joining us and I will see you very soon.